hit. Actually, let me fix that so it's not snaggly like that. Good, my eyes are. There we go. If I hit seven right now, make seven copies. It does make those copies with a crossover right here. Although it's very clear and simple in designer to see the difference between two wires crossing each other and a wire splitting because it draws a little, little square node on the split. The reason it crosses the wires over like this, that is actually the correct drafting methodology. Because as long as you do cross your wires like this, wire number one is always the topmost or the leftmost wire in each group. Anywhere you look, you can only see this little section of the screen. You would know that channel one is the leftmost wire if you follow those drafting standards. but not least, I think it's the last thing How do you get rid of a wire, or part of a wire, more precisely? Get rid of a vertex. If I click on this vertex and start moving this wire, I can reposition that chunk of the wire. And it then turns red, because I don't have the inputs and outputs all connected correctly. I promise the software will catch up, but there we go. If while moving like that, and again, you guys can't see this happen, but right now, I'm holding that vertex, my mouse button is still down, I'm holding that vertex on top of the next vertex. And so on my screen, the little cursor, the little arrow, has a minus sign next to it. When I release my mouse, it'll delete that whole first chunk of the, of the wire. It's now gone. There's only one vertex left. If I grab this, drag it back to the next vertex, a little minus sign appears on my screen, and when I release it, it deletes that chunk of wire. Now I've got a vertex sitting here in the middle of my wire for no reason. I don't need to have. Delete that, I just grab the vertex, drag it on top of the next vertex. A little minus sign appears, which again, you guys can't see. I apologize for that. I release the mouse button, and it deletes that extra vertex. Now, if you did want to add a vertex, let's say you wanted a little diagonal jaggy in this wire over here, that's the one thing you can't do without switching modes. You have to go to Add Wires Mode. You click to make a new wire, but now instead of actually placing that new wire somewhere, just hit Escape. puts that vertex in for you. It also makes the wire turn red, but as soon as you move that vertex, he goes, oh, right, it's fine. Nothing's broken. Now you're good. Software will show that eventually. There we go. So going over into add wires mode is required when you want to add a vertex to a wire. The only time you absolutely have to do it. Any questions on wiring? Let me look at my uh, wiring cheat sheet here. Make sure I didn't forget to tell you something. That's everything. All right. I'm going to take a break. Show you how breaks are going to work. Um, this class is based on Chicago time. We started at noon Chicago time. Right now it's just coming up on 1 o'clock in Chicago. But the problem is we all need a common clock to work off of. We're going to get that. 
courtesy of a happy little web clock here. This first break we're just going to do uh, slightly extended, a little more than 10 minutes. Share this with you. There we go. So this clock is showing current Chicago time, and at the bottom there it says class return time, 1.12. We're going to start up the class again when this clock says 112, not when my desk clock says 112 or when your desk clock says 112, when this clock says 112. 